juggernaut. Today we are taking a look at two action figures. First we have Corsair and the Vilda figure Chod. You need Corsair in order to complete the Vilda figure Chod along with other six figures. In this review, I will take a closer look at the action figure and do a size comparison. Corsair comes in the standard windowless box, art on the side, and on the back is a either a product render or a product shot of the figure. And that's all in terms of the box. Side by side, these two star jammers looks great. The colors of Corsair pops but most especially Chod. They are faithful to how they look in their first appearance in the comic books. Looking a closer look at Corsair, Hasbro has done it again in terms of the photo real tech application on the facial features of this figure. You can see how well done his mustache is, his eyebrows, there is some blush on his cheeks. It's a really well done sculpted figure in terms of the hair it's just a brown hair he has a bandana on this and in terms of his costume it's like a person somewhat in a body paint because there are no sculpted details everything is painted on except of course for the collar and his belt which are separate pieces attached to the figure so there is no sculpted boots at all so everything is painted on and this is on the new body mold so we can see that he has pinless elbows and knees and he has a butterfly joint it's different from the other costume he has in the 90s wherein he has shoulder pads so this is more of the first appearance look from the back we can see the butterfly joint and still well painted from the back i don't see any issues in terms of the paint application he has your standard articulation in terms of a marvel legend with um bicep swivel and upper thigh swivel and lower cap swivel he comes with a pair of gun triggering hands he doesn't come with anything that is specific to the sword so when you use this particular hands, it's a bit loose when you put the sword on his hands. He comes with a pair of punching hands. These hands are all plain red plastic, so there's nothing special right here. It's just your basic alternate hands. Plus, he also comes with a sword. It is the same sword that Hasbro has used a billion times with other figures. At least for this figure, he came with accessories. Usually, Hasbro will just give us a pair of alternate hands, but he comes with a sword and a gun as well. It's a bit difficult to uh, peg in the sword inside his belt. I'm sure in terms of the silver paint of the sword, it gets chipped off because of how tight this is. I'm just using one hand so it's a bit difficult for me to remove it but yeah, you can see my point. It's very tight and this is a very silver shiny type of paint applied on the plastic so over time it can get removed. The handle though is all gold plastic. Here are other figures that wants to be a pirate. They have the same kind of sword. We have Pirate Kate, Pirate Deadpool, and the Swashbuckling Nightcrawler. Different paint applications. The most plain one is with Deadpool, which has less paint. Nightcrawler has um, like a gold handle. Same is true for Deadpool. So here we have the Musketeers doing their pose. Next, we're going to take a look at the Vilda figure Chod. In terms of colors, he has a very bright uh, green color that stands out from the shelf. His eyes are painted bright red as well. Well sculpted facial features of somewhat a like lizard or some kind of a reptile looking alien. 
in terms of the body the horizontal lines that run through his body is present it is well done in terms of his fins it's not as yellow as how the source materials from the 70s look like usually chod's fins are bright yellow there are scales on his shoulder to his hands. In terms of his legs, missing are the horizontal lines that run through his legs. Instead, we have some what cracking sculpted details on his legs. From the back, we can see that yes, the yellow is missing, but it's more of a light green which blends in with the rest of the body. The horizontal sculpted lines are there with some bumps along the way. Like he has some kind of a skin disease or a chicken pox, but I don't know. Well, that's just character design. In terms of the legs, yes, here we go. Again, no horizontal lines sculpted on. Another thing that I missed out is in terms of his hands, he's supposed to have four fingers. This figure has five fingers he can stretch his arms that far and as you can see he has a red belt he can look down that much but when he starts to look down that much you can see a hole showing up he has single jointed elbows and here is the exact match in terms of most of his body parts especially the legs it's the exact same legs that Hasro has reused over and over again, which explains why there are crack marks on his legs because Rhino has that in his armor. In terms of the torso, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same, but in terms of the legs, it is exactly the same. It's a build of figure leg. But in terms of the scope, it does the job well but i just hope they added the horizontal lines in terms of his torso the cut on his crunch is different from rhino so we can say that though it does reuse most of rhino's parts probably the upper torso is different and new for chod also noticeable is those uh, spots on his abs it's not present in rhino so probably this upper torso is indeed a new body mold and it's just modeled after rhino's mold so there you go some similarities but not completely the same in terms of the first appearance they both appeared in uncanny x-men number 104 for the Toy Biz action figure, here we have the In The Box Collector. Next, we've got the X-Men The Dark Phoenix Saga Pack. So this was an exclusive to F.A. Swartz again. We've got Corsair. We've got the Phoenix, of course, but in red rather than green. And she comes with this nice gold. We've got um, Chord, but he's basically the same figure. There's no differences in him whatsoever. And then we get Spacesuit Wolverine. For more of the Toy Biz review, check out his YouTube channel. I'll leave in the description below. Corsair stands 16.5 centimeters or 6.5 inch tall. According to Marvel.com, he stands 6 feet 3 inches. In terms of 112 scale, he is just right. Here he is besides other Marvel Legends figures. We have Miles Morales, Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Omega Red. Next up we have are the females, Spider-Gwen, Jubilee, Captain Kate, and Spinneret. In terms of the Summers family, Hasbro has made Cyclops, Havoc, and Vulcan. Missing is Adam X. Next up we have Chod. He is 20.5 cm or 8 inch tall. According to the handbook of the Marvel Universe, he is 9 feet tall making this figure short about 1 feet. Here he is besides Miles Morales, Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Omega Red. Next up, we have him besides the females. We have Spider-Gwen, Jubilee, Captain Kate, and Spinneret. So far, these are all Marvel Legends. 
Next we have is the full Chod build a figure wave. We have Emma Frost, Cyclops, Corsair, Fang, Kid Omega, Chamber, and Monet. This has been a mix and match kind of wave. Overall, Corsair is a well done figure. Exceptional, especially in terms of the details of his face sculpt. In terms of Chod, Chod can be a mix in terms of like feedbacks from customers or from reviewers because he is not exactly 100% accurate in terms of the comic book material. He does come with a cool accessory which is his pet. In terms of the character mix of this particular wave, X-Men wave, I just hope they went with a, a singular type of theme instead of mix and matching it but overall these figures are really exceptional especially they are just comic book figures but hasbro did some extra details extra features a big thank you to rambling rob for my intro thank you to payaso diorama for the dioramas that i've used in my reviews and thank you to Stydabex. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the notification bell.